All right, y'all, what's up? It is January 15th. It's MLK Day. We are snowed in in Memphis, Tennessee. So, uh, yeah. Anyway. We are snowed in. Ain't we inside? In the snow? I mean, we can get out. Yeah, we can get out. Well, Mrs. Snowden is her daughter's box in the snow pile? Mm-mm. When people say snowed in, it just means, at least here in Memphis, when we say that, we just mean we ain't going outside because it's snow outside. So it's not necessarily you can't go outside. It's just that you don't want to go outside. All right, so it is um, January 15th, and the, F, the issue for today... So we have we have two cover stories, and of course, we got we got the sex habit of Negro women with Herb Jeffrey saying he wouldn't pass to become a singing star. Oh wait, oh wait, he's for this one. Negro singers who refuse to pass. When they say refuse to pass, they mean refusing to pass for white. Um. I need to. I know they ain't got no color picture of him, but let's let's look this man up, cause baby, Herb, Herb, Jeffrey. Anybody got a color photo? Cause he looking um, he looking, he looking, he looking like. What you mean, Pat? You are. You are. You are what you are. Okay, let's see. Okay. 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 Let's see. Let's see. How are you supposed to be? Okay. I mean, I don't know. He got some waves on it, though. What is this? This man got some ways for you all right anyway moving forward anyway moving on um i think the more interesting story would be he got some little ways here it's the sex habit of negro women like i said yesterday i don't know who was writing for jet but like i said yesterday jet ain't nothing but was nothing but um uh um the precursor to the shade room because y'all they really weren't talking about nothing they really weren't talking about nothing in jet absolutely nothing um and, and i don't even think i don't even maybe ebony was more valid journalistically i don't know maybe we, maybe y'all do that but anyway let's get to this one same habits of negro women like why is this even an article why is this even an article you know what i'm saying what? Who, who? Anyway, maybe somebody asked. I don't know. I wasn't born in 1952. Maybe somebody asked. Anyway, let's get into it. It says, just how sexy is the Negro woman? Extremely. Um, masculine authorities on the subject have tossed this intriguing question around for centuries with little agreement. Today's opinion among many white persons is that she is extraordinarily sensual, perhaps a little abnormal in her sex habits. What's that supposed to mean? What does that mean, a little abnormal? If writers of the past have glorified her as a fiery female whose sex appetites can be aroused upon the slightest provocation, and love stroke poets have penned volumes of verses to the dark ladies and ebony creatures of their mental, if not actual, delinquency. Uh -oh. mm, okay. Because because they did not give us any sources, I don't know who 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 are the writers of the past. Okay, who who are the writers of the past? Who are they? Moving forward, the legend of brown woman sexuality dates back as far as ancient Rome, when Negro women were imported from Africa for the amusement and satisfaction of whites. Let's look this up. Roman uh, importing. African women. Women. Let's see. What, what were they doing? What are you importing? Okay. 
let's see let's see this is quora let's see let's see what quora gotta say what quora gotta say not like quora is a, is a valid anything let's let's not use quora let's see romans sex trafficking african women 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 not woman that was just one woman uh okay that's from 2023 okay i guess i don't call it sex trafficking back in the day um whatever okay we're not gonna find it let's look for it um when Negro were imported from africa for the amusement and satisfaction of whites i'm gonna have to look into that some more um because imported how you import a person you import goods you don't import people but this was 1952 but uh uh-huh napoleon brought them to france for the same purpose while more practical slave owners in the united states and the west indies use it as both mates and mammies I guess that's a nice way to say it. Many white men today believe that any Caucasian who wears a Negro is likely to tire of her undisciplined passion soon and return to one of his more demure race, yet they seek the Negro woman out as a most desirable mistress. Uh, no comment on that last part. But they do be doing it. I ain't gonna call nobody husband out. Anyway, actually, modern colored women find their dubious distinction a trifle hard to live up to. Dr. Alfred C. Kinsey, who is expected to publish in 1952 his long discussed study on the sex behavior of American women, disclosed that preliminary research among Negroes uncovered little difference at all between the sexual activity of colored and white women on the same social levels. Kinsey declared that whites who believe Negroes to be oversexed are usually those who have had contact with the lowest level of Negroes. The lowest level meaning uh, low on the social and financial level. Although there is a great deal of disagreement among modern psychologists, marriage counselors, and sociologists on the subject, the majority of them agree with Dr. Kinsey's conclusions. The current studies, which included Negro women, they uncovered the following facts. And we're going to get into Dr. Kinsey because I had to look him up real quick. I was like, who's this man? Who is this man? Let's look at him real quick. This this man looked like he looked like he got like don't he look like he looked like one of them men that be paying random black girls. That's what he looked like. That's what he looked like. He looked like, looked like. He looked like a pervert. And I said that before I even read his story in um He's the father of the sex evolution. Um, what's Kinsey Institute? I, I just don't think he can be trusted. He don't look like he could be trusted. Uh, what, what about him? Oh, this is this is page. So I ain't gonna say too much about him wrong. Um, but they ain't gonna say too much about him wrong. But I saw they said he was his his sources were not valid. Um, his samples were not representative of the general population. He hired a photographer to film volunteers and members of his research staff engaging in sexual activities. He looked like he do that. He looked like he do that. Uh, he used data from a single pedophile and presented it as being from various sources. How you know a single? Where do you get a single pedophile? Um, Okay, Kennedy said he also interviewed nine men who was just one man. One man who had um look at this, look at this, look at this. Look at this. Um don't know the Kennedy's sexual activity influences work. He over represented prisoners and prostitutes, classified some single people as married, and then he included a disproportionate number of homosexual men, which may have distorted his studies while he has been criticized for admitting African Americans from his research. His report on the human male includes numerous references to African American participants. So, um, uh, yeah, we have to 
get more to him. Uh huh, uh huh. He's a bisexual. I believe he's a young man who punishes himself for having more erotic feelings. He and his wife agree that he can have sex with other people as well as with each other. He has sex with his students. He was just doing a lot. He was just doing a lot. Um, um, he came up with the with the Kenzie skate. Okay, yeah. Anyway, I don't know why he in Jet Magazine if he ain't had no no work, but this was 1952. They didn't know any better. Anyway, let's move forward. Um, so here's what he says. 10% of Negro women are completely frigid, having never experienced and having little desire for intimacy with their husbands. And he probably didn't interview not a one, but some upper class women feel that sex was another of their marital burdens actually admitted encouraging their husbands to have affairs with other women i mean uh, if i married the upper class man i'd probably be like this too I, i'm just here for the money i'm sorry go do what you need to do i'm just here for the security i'm sorry i don't trust you anyway do what you do and i'm gonna go buy some shoes approximately three out of ten negro women are cold cold while the remainder express satisfaction with from intimacy with their husbands. What's, what's the difference between frigid and cold? Premarital sex among both Negroes and whites is common, with approximately two thirds of the women interviewed having premarital sex relations, usually with the man whom they later marry. 5% of middle class married groups reported that their first experience was either shocking or revolting. 44% felt neither enjoyment nor revulsion. And 51% said they enjoyed the experience. Okay. What what are, what are these? Why does this even hit? I don't know. 62% of the same group said they later enjoyed regular intercourse. 10% found it distasteful. And 28% were neutral. A study of American college women revealed that while Negroes with higher education had much more than their less well educated sisters, they are less inclined to go the limit. One half of the non-college students interviewed were not virgins when they married, while almost two-thirds of the college women were. The Kinsey Report is likely to show a higher average of premarital experience for both college and non-college educated women. For Kinsey said, after early studies of thousands of women, that approximately 73% were not virgins when they married and usually had sex experience before they were 20. A survey of 100 upper-class married women by another researcher Revealed that 24 had sex relations that were married to men other than their husbands, but the Kinsey Report is likely to show a much lower average for human infidelity than this. The conclusion, usually reached by modern marriage authorities, is that the super sexuality of the Negro woman is just another fiction, that her sex life is likely to be as civilized as that of the white society whose standards she has accepted. Um, that's interesting. I don't know. Um, but I, I that's interesting because, like, with the thing yesterday, oh my goodness, my back, where it was talking about like the dirty records or whatever. I'm good. It just makes, and I'm thinking about like current day. Oh no, not even, oh, it's not broken. Like, where we have like these uh, rappers and women in the industry, mostly rappers, I'm thinking of like Sufiana, and it's like, you know, they create an image of how they are, and then it's like, mm, they may not necessarily really be like that, just to make money, um, but it, this last little sentence, um, not that or civilized sex life, I don't know, what does that mean? What does that mean? What is a civilized sex life? Like, what's that supposed to mean? What's that supposed to mean? Because I don't think raping, raping um, women is civilized. Let me just come out. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I'm done with that. I'm done. Anyway, that is the one for today. The sex habits of Negro women. What was Jet on? I don't know. I don't know. But that's 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 just what they were doing in nineteen fifty two.